I'm Sheila and today I wanted to show you my seed haul. I live in the BC interior and I, we're trying to live like a sustainable life, grow as much food as we can um, and buy locally. And uh, this past year I had a baby so I did not do a lot of gardening but I'm hoping to pick it up and plan for the most epic garden in the summer of 2021. So part of that plan is to grow foods that are good for storing, canning, fermenting, that sort of thing. So what I want to do is go through my plan, seeds that I have, um, and uh, show you some of my favorites too, because it was hard to find my favorites. Um, so first off, I'm going to start with the companies that I ordered from. Um, and this isn't fancy. This was just looking for certain seeds. And I decided that I was going to just stick to two companies because between the two, I could find most of the seeds that I want. Given our certain pandemic life, not everything, uh, is available, sold out, or just, um, not on the roster this year. Um, so the two companies that I ordered from, um, the first is West Coast Seeds. They're Canadian. Um, mostly organic depending um oh yeah untreated untreated seeds for organic growing non-gmo so i've ordered from them before years and years ago and i had really poor germination rates i was also like a novice gardener so i think this year will be different but i haven't ordered from them in years because of that i usually order from um I can't think of the name another canadian company um and they were out of some major seeds that I wanted. I mean, kudos to them. They're probably doing really well. So I just had to look somewhere else. And then the other place that I ordered from was a recommendation from my friend. Um, and that was Baker Creek Seeds, also called uh, Rare Seeds. Um, and I'll put the links below to the companies, but I mean, I think everybody knows West Coast and Baker Creek. I didn't, I live in a bubble. I knew West Coast, I didn't know Baker Creek. Um, anyway, so yeah. Okay. So I'll go through, um, what I did is I, um, grouped the categories of seeds together. So first off, um, I'm just going to start. Oh yeah. And that banging that you hear is my son building something. This is what you get. Live entertainment. Um, the other one, the other sound you might hear is my baby monitor. <laughs> um, so I guess, um, I'm just going to start I really tried to go minimal. Um, Kate from Venison for Dinner had kind of given this tip to just um, order what you needed, which I thought was really great because you don't want to take away from other people um, who like also want to order seeds. So I feel like every, it gives everybody a chance. Now I had this in mind and then I went a little crazy. So I'll, I'll show you like an example, like here I ordered, um, this is, Cabbage Premium Late Flat Dutch. So I ordered this and I only ordered one kind of cabbage and I grow a lot of cabbage. I um, I like to can it and I also like to ferment it and to make sauerkraut. Um, but I'm just hoping that this is all I need. I usually plant a couple different kinds because I find that um, bugs and worms will sort of navigate to another one. I do have some saved seed. I should back up the bus here. I saved seed and people gave me seed. So this is my seed haul from what I bought. This does not show you what I saved. I'll have to make another video with that. <laughs> anyway, so one kind of cabbage, but it just looks so cool. Introduced by European settlers in the 1860s. Love it. Okay, um, next, uh, some basil. I did order some meat varieties, not a ton, but um, a Siam Queen Thai, which looks super cool. Basil leaf lettuce. This is why I love this Baker Creek. They're just like the coolest varieties. Um, basil Dolce Fresca. This one's West Coast seed. I know I only need one kind of basil, but I kind of just, I went bananas. But like I only got one kind of carrots because I can tell you right now, Scarlet Nantes, 
are the best kind of carrot to plant. They're like cornless, they're sweet, they store really well. And we have a cellar here down that dungeon. And so we like to store carrots in there. Uh, also beets, winter keeper Lutz. So uh, this was another one because I just want good storage beets. Um, I probably will can some, but I really just want to store them. So that'll be ideal. Uh, cucumbers, um, early fortune. I, I went for field cukes this year. Um, I do have a greenhouse, but I just wanted plain old field cukes. I find that they do better. With my gardening style, we'll say. Um, Jibai Shimu Sharazu. Doesn't say anything about it. <laughs> so, uh, those. I obviously picked them for a reason. Boston Pickling, so sort of just like a traditional pickler. And I do pickle, and I got a good pickling recipe last year that I'd had a few years ago. That's a different story. Um, onions, it was hard to find onions. I really, really wanted leeks. Simple Living Alaska, I don't know if you guys watch their videos, but they're off the chain. They had stored leeks in their cellar and they did awesome in Alaska. So I really, um, I really wanna do leeks. Of course I pick a Bulgarian giant. Fine autumn variety, popular in Europe, very long, thin, high quality leek, light green leaves. Wish me luck, never grown leeks before but I love to eat them. Um, Elsa Craig onion. I have grown these before. Rather massive size, five pounds is common. Ooh. Yeah, I was definitely limited on onions. I'm sure if I see some onions at the hardware store, I'll probably pick some up. Uh, I only got one kind of corn, peaches and cream. I have grown some heritage varieties, um, some different kinds, but I was like, you know what? I am just growing plain corn, the mice usually eat them, so this is like, we'll see what happens if my uh, barn cats keep up with the mice and we'll get corn. Uh, beans. Ferrari. I'm, I don't know why I <laughs> bought so many beans. I have a story about beans, I'll tell you one sec. Uh, Mammoth Melting Sugar Snow Peas. These are amazing. And my neighbor saved me some um, Sugar Snap Peas. I think they're the Oregon Giants. So I'm excited for those. Um, beans there. Speedy Bush Bean. Because we just want to eat food. I actually never ever grow a bush bean. And I was checking on a friend's garden one year when they were on holidays helping water. And she's like, pick my beans if you want to. And she only grew a bush bean at uh, Grand Prairie and they were off the chain. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just go with the plain 190 seeds. Yeah, Let's see how many I grow. I have two 1200 square foot garden beds. So it's possible if I organize things. Let's see, now this is a broad bean. This is Eleonora. Eleonora. Okay, I have a few favorite things that I grow. I hope the camera's not too wobbly. Um, I have a few favorite things that I grow. Broad beans is contender for number one. They're beautiful. The flowers are beautiful. Uh, the little tiny, it's like they grow in a pillow and you open them up and you're like, oh, what's this little thing? It's so loud down there. Anyway. Um, oh my God, it says to plant them in the fall. I didn't know that, that's so cool. I am also, I got a tip that Salt Spring Seeds has some broad beans and I'm probably gonna order them. And I found Baker Creek, they got um, one kind of broad bean in stock, uh, a coffee bean, no, I can't remember what it is, but I might get those too. Cat on the table, <laughs> it's not a seed. Oh, Corbin. He's not, look, for his size, he's not keeping up with the mice in the garden. Okay, what next? I'm kind of saving my favorite for the end. So yeah, so beans, it's like I 
meant to order one kind of bean and I, I ordered a few and beans usually do well here. I had problems with broad beans one year, um, but, um, cat wants it. but anyway, we'll see what happens. Okay. Tomatoes. What is wrong with me? I wanted to grow one kind of tomato. Do one thing well. Well, let me show you. I'm thinking maybe I'll just grow like literally two plants of each kind. This is Cherokee Purple. 1890 Cherokee Indian Heirloom. Deep, I'm reading it. This is not my words. Beautiful, deep, dusky, purple, pink color. Superb, sweet flavor, very large fruit. Sunrise Bumblebee. I decided to do a cherry tomato. I usually don't do them because you just get so many and it's just like insanity, but I've got two kids now, so I think these will be um, enjoyed. Oh, good. The broccoli pile was in with the tomato, so maybe my tomato problem isn't so bad. Okay, classic beef steak. Sometimes you just have to go with the goods. And then sun gold. These will be in the greenhouse. So hopefully they do well. My cat can get like OCD determined. And if I'm like sitting, he's like, oh, I'm gonna go sit on your lap. And he also is not allowed on the table, but teaching him that when he's like 10. Ah, oh, my camera's so wobbly. Okay, some boring ones. Broccoli. Oh no, this is broccolini. Broccolini does better than broccoli. I have had some good years with broccoli, but I was just like, I'm just doing broccolini. Corbin, stay down. Brussels sprouts. I have Brussels sprouts still growing in the garden right now, and I will be eating them in the spring as well. They do amazing. Uh, by amazing, I mean they're really late and we eat them in the winter in the spring, but they're good. This is a really cool cauliflower, purple of Sicily. Now I, uh, cauliflower sometimes does well, sometimes doesn't. So, and I find it hard to store. Um, I have, I had like one year with an amazing crop of broccoli, blanched it, froze it, and it was woody and disgusting. So not the plant itself, but the process made them like that. Um, so I just want to eat what I grow. So this will be something we're going to eat in season. Um, and Ooh, this one is cauliflower de Jesse. It's like little spirals, fractal patterns and stunning creamy white color. Make this a favorite cauliflower in Italy. Don't mind if I do. Um, in my cup today, beautiful Shannon Butler Kiln House Studios mug. It is uh, Earl Grey with oat milk. And I said oat, not goat, <laughs> if you were wondering. Also, my super cute coaster my son made me, bushwhacking in the forest. It's like his favorite thing. Okay, I'm just deciding. Okay, I'm gonna go with, oh yeah, peppers. I had a decent year with peppers um, last year, which was probably my first year as a decent year, and I made um, fermented hot sauce, which is super cool. So of course, I saw these and went crazy. Brazilian starfish. Unique deep red star-shaped fruit of variable heat, yet juicy and often quite sweet. Mm. That's fun. <clears throat> Carolina Reaper, hottest pepper in the world. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I love hot food, but this is, I'll be giving these away. I will be giving them away. Look at that. Cool, hey? Oh, that's a mistake. Uh, oh, these ones look good. Orange spice jalapeno. All right. Some more non-interesting ones. Kohlrabi. I want to ferment. Looks super cool. What's it say? Oh, it's a free seed. I think I ordered it. Or it's free. <laughs> Turnips. Tokyo Cross. Attractive smooth white roots. I just want to eat what's in season for turnips. Um... Did you know that oven roasted turnips are like one of the best things in the world? Yeah, I didn't know. Cauliflower too, but so good. China rose. I actually am not a huge radish person, Cam's like radish. A very old type, a very hardy fall winter variety, rose colored roots, five inches long. Sometimes it's hard to resist the good looking ones. Maybe I'll grow turnips really well. Okay. Saving like the best for last. 
We really like greens. I mean, who doesn't? Everybody who has a garden does, but there's some new things that I'm growing this year. Collards. Mm. Would you say Vates collards? Vates collards, slotable dwarf variety. That's exciting. Yeah. Thousand head kale. I don't know if anybody saw my Instagram. Anyway, I have posted lately. I'll just tell the story. So last year had the baby started a million seeds because I was like, it's a pandemic. I'm going to have a huge garden, but then you actually have the baby and no, you can't have a huge garden. Um, so I had five kale plants planted and this was just seed. I didn't buy a single seed last year. This is why I have such a big seed order. I don't have any um, seed saved from previous years. So oh, minus the seed I saved this year, but prior to that, no seeds saved. I used it all. Anyway, so I had five kale plants and it was just like that traditional frilly kale. Um, and we ate like kings off this kale because it just did so well. So I have a, a new or a renewed love for kale. Um, sometimes you get sick of it and now I'm like, no, we got kale. I'm going to just kale it up. Kale, kale, kale. So kale thousand head. Does anybody follow Deanna Cat on Instagram? Her garden is crazy and she grows some really cool kale. Red Ursa. This just looked neat. This looked so cool. Radicchio. Castelfranco. Almost couldn't read that. <laughs> oh yeah, Swiss chard. I also was thankful for Swiss chard this year. I grew some and uh, oh, I hear my puppy. Anyway, it was really good. It's just little five color. Chinese cabbage, I wanna do some, what's the word? Kimchi. Sorry for that pause. More of those baits. Bloomsdale Savoy. Um, best when planted in early spring or fall. So we'll see. And then mustard greens, oh my God. Uh, Komatsuna Red, this looks like a hybrid. Um, I love mustard greens. Ruby Streaks Organic, so we just eat those fresh in season. And Butter Crunch Lettuce, my favorite, favorite kind of lettuce. Butter Crunch Lettuce. It has like thick leaves, small heads, does really well here. So good. Okay, now we're getting into some of my favorite things. Not that none of these were my favorite things, but oh my god. Okay, so part of the reason why I ended up on Baker Creek and West Coast Seeds is because I love patty pans. Um, I just love growing them. Um, I've had really great success growing them. People love zucchini. You'll notice I have zero zucchini in here. This is like my zucchini because they're just like darling and little and sweet and you can harvest them when they're this big and fry them up. You can grate them. You can, I just, I just love, love, love. And they're not for storing. Um, it's a summer squash. Rare Native American squash, cucurbita petto, yellow scallop. So excited for these. And then Patterson Panache, jaune et vert scallop. Super excited for these. I didn't even know these things existed. This is why I get so happy when my friend Josh tells me about seed companies. I've got two packs. I've got two packs. I don't need that many. Do you know how many one, one plant will give you like literally a million if you just keep harvesting them like a million it's ridiculous and it's so fun and then this is a patty pan blend now in this blend you'll see this pale green one that was um what i grew two years ago so this will be the closest that i can get the green white anyway they're beautiful i love them i'm gonna have a lot i'm gonna need a bigger garden not even done. Okay. So that was my second favorite thing to plant, patty pans. First broad beans, second patty pans, third. Squash, pumpkins, gourds. I love them all. Why? Why? I don't even know. So this year, um, it was fun to uh, do a little uh front porch decoration thing and I put a few squash on there and a bale of hay, you know, the Instagram favorite. I think I got like three legs. 
<laughs> anyway, um, so some of these are decorative. Wasteful, no. Valuable for everybody's sanity to do fun and creative things as well as gardening. And then some are for eating and some just like look super cool and we're gonna eat them and decorate with them and then like have all the fun. So this one's Moringa Pumpkin. Um, this one is good for eating and decorating with. You can do like a little stacker. What? Uh, Super Moon, a white pumpkin. Oh my God. Yes, please. Acorn Festival. They actually had these at our grocery store in our tiny town. And I didn't love the taste, but I'd already ordered these. So I am curious to see um, how they turn out. Okay, next up, this one I'm really excited for, Boston Marrow. They can be 15 pounds. And like this beautiful, brilliant red orange. They're gonna be definitely a part of the decoration. Look at this one's gonna be a part of the decoration. Musqui de Maroc. Uh, a North African commercial variety, but oh my God. Deliciously decorative, it says. Yes, it is. Marina de Chiago. Chiogia, heirloom uh, sea pumpkin of Chiogia on the coast of Italy. Oh my God. Good for eating. This is a little patty pan. I put it in the wrong pile. Patterson Street Melange. Incredible mix of French scallops. Oh my God. So you can eat them young or you can decorate with them when they're mature. This is a Queensland blue, so this will be a decorating one. Boring. Uh, buttercup for eating, storing, yummy, delicious. Shishi Gatani, a rare and historic Japanese heirloom, hourglass shaped fruit in this dark green, nutty flavor. Mm -hmm. Love the nutty flavor ones. Oh, and a loofah. I'm gonna try growing these. We'll see. My friend in Grand Prairie for some, so it's possible. Oh, did I miss a stack? Oh no, I got those. Okay, last stack. Flowers. So previously, I had only grown straw flowers, and the bees loved them, like loved them, and they were so easy to grow. So I'm gonna grow those again, obviously, and I'm gonna save save seed this time because I'm not an amateur. Uh, early sweet pea mix, multiflora. I did not get a lot of flowers, people. Morning Glory, I love Morning Glories, but second, or split second. Look how beautiful that looks. Very excited. Perennial Sweet Pea Mix. I have no idea where I'm gonna put that. I'll just buy them, deal with it later. I got two of those for some reason. Classic Artistic Bachelor's Button. No idea. Butterfly Bush. See, why am I showing that to you? Okay, so I also got something else in the mail. Super exciting and it was almost, it just felt like my birthday. So I'm gonna include this as part of my seed haul. This is from my friend in Winnipeg who really enjoys and has like broadened my mind to growing things that aren't what you usually see in the seed catalogs and what you usually get from the grocery store. Um, through the years, he sent me things like tobacco and mount, uh, red orc, mountain spinach, and really fun things. So he sent me seed swap mixtape, super gold. Let's see if you can see that. How fun. Oh, you can see my TV. I'm boring. Okay. So he put the names of the seeds and then he also put, so this one, As, Asclepius Incarnata by Tracy Chapman. Like it's a song. This is either, uh, it's also called Swamp Milkweed, Rose Milkweed, or Wild Indian Hemp, and it's a perennial. So that's fun. Mm -hmm. This one, Gallardia Aristata by Mary J. Blige. <laughs> It's a flowering plant or uh, it's a blanket flower. Oh, I didn't write this one down. Oh yeah, I'll show you in a sec. Oh, garlic chives um, by Hole. <laughs> um, Asclepius curasavica by Tattoo. 
Uh, oh, Mexican butterfly weed, tropical milkweed. I love milkweed. It's so good for the butterflies, people. Borage. I grow borage. The bees are obsessed. Sherville by Everclear. The borage was by the cardigans. Uh, he wrote Regular Ass Chives by Paula Cole. <laughs> Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe by the Dave Matthews Band. Oh yeah, okay. He sent me two of this one. Um, Oka Hijiki which is native to China, Korea, Japan, and Eastern Russia. And it also tra translates to land seaweed and you can eat the leaves and the shoots. Um, lipstick pepper, which is thick red heirloom, four inch variety, 70 days. So um, that was super fun. He also sent me a cactus cutting, which I planted and is growing. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so that is it. That is my seed haul for 2020 year, but 2021 garden. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I will post another video showing the seeds that I saved this summer, even though I had a pretty pitiful garden, I still managed to save some from um, other friends' gardens, true story, and some from my own garden. So uh, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, I mean, you can like and subscribe. <laughs> feels so weird to say that but anyway um and uh if you have like a favorite seed that I missed in this will you please um put it in the comments and I oh and also this seed company because I will definitely go and order them like that's not a lie okay well have a great day and happy gardening cheers